Hey everybody, welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm Jordan Edwards. I'm Demi Ramos. And today we've got Maya, AKA MXM Tune on the show. She is a YouTuber turned singer songwriter, turned she's a gamer, she's a podcast host. So she's got a lot of stuff on her plate, a lot of stuff to talk about. And uh, Demi, how you doing? I am doing wonderful. Um, I was at the dentist um, with some pretty, you know, everyone just loves the dentist. But then I got a text from Jordan. Everybody just loves the dentist. <laughs> we love the dentist. Shout out to the dentist. We're going to have them on the show. Cool. All right. There's Maya right there. Hello. There Hello. she is. <laughs> hey, Maya. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. I knew that, that talking to someone who's an experienced YouTuber, you'd have a good microphone. So I am <laughs> using my built-in microphone currently, but would you like me to set up a microphone? It sounds good. Okay, um, it well, does sound really good. That's great news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to say, Maya, when I was preparing for this interview, I was looking at a YouTube channel. I came across those recent videos you've done, the snacks from around the world videos. And I got distracted and just started watching them like I was I was just watching any video. And I was like, oh, I should actually be clicking on more things and looking at more things. But I'm like, I want to know what these Welsh snack cakes taste like. <laughs> so you, mission accomplished on those videos. That's great news. I'm so glad you enjoyed them. <laughs> so just out of curiosity then, what is your favorite international snack? My favorite snack is actually something that I didn't get to eat on one of those videos that I made, but it's this candy that I used to eat when I went to Hong Kong to visit my family, and it's called Sugus, and it's literally just Asian Starburst, but the flavors are so much better, and I used to just, like, my family would haul a suitcase full of this candy back whenever we would visit, so we would just oh have God. it a year supply for, of Sugus, and I haven't eaten it in a really long time, but it's probably my favorite snack. <laughs> I, I actually have a related snack story my uh you're you're um part german your dad mm -hmm. is, is german and my mom growing up worked for a german couple um and they would bring me they'd go to germany they'd bring me back german food and they brought back german gummy bears like oh with the german God. writing on them and they were so much juicier and like the, the flavor was so much more like accurate to to whatever like the cherry tasted like actual cherries so, you know, I feel like in America, we just kind of, we like really water down our snacks, I guess. Oh, 100%. I think if I've learned anything from tasting snacks from around the world is that we're not very good at it here in the no. USA. You know? <laughs> in, in America, we're all about, you know, cheaper and higher quantity and more sugar rather than, you know, better quality. Flavor, flavor yeah. and quality, yeah. yeah. Uh, you are a bedroom pop sensation. You seem to be like, when I bump your tunes, I feel like I'm floating on a cloud and I'm talking to my best girlfriend talk, basically. I, it's, it's infectious, really. How was, what was the journey going from YouTube sensation to bedroom pop? Can you tell us about that? It was really scary. I mean, I've just never had familiarity with the music industry growing up. Both of my parents are teachers. And so being in any field of entertainment was never something that I ever expected for myself. And so to go from the format of like playing my guitar with my acoustic panels and everything in my bedroom to all of a sudden, you know, releasing things on a bigger scale was really daunting because I didn't have really necessarily the context or the uh, education to approach that environment. So it was a really big kind of jumping off point for me. But I think, you know, I've learned so much about my project and myself through the process of like developing this into a career and I wouldn't change anything. But it was really daunting, like trying to figure out how to make a team and do a formal release and all these yeah. things that you would never so you're have a self -taught to think about. Musician. I trained classically on cello and violin growing up, but obviously oh, I am not a famous classical artist. So, you know, I, I made it with the ukulele. You're okay. not as good as Yo-Yo Ma yet. <laughs> Most definitely not as good as Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> uh, do you consider yourself more of a YouTuber or a musician? Like, I know you're, you're really, you know, you're doing, you know, interviews like this to really push your music out, but you also are actively still on your YouTube channel um, doing snack videos, for example. But do, what do you consider yourself now? I know it's tough to put a label on things, but how seriously is the music 
how serious of a part of uh, a part of your life is the music at this point? The music is definitely, I think, the most important part. Like it's kind of the core of everything that I get to do. And, and I try to hopefully involve it in every aspect of what I make. And even if I am making snack videos about what are my favorite international snacks, I'm still trying to use my YouTube channel as kind of the central point for releasing visualizers or official audios and music videos and all these various things. And so um, I think like I definitely view music as the core of everything and kind of like the tree trunk for all the branches of what comes off of my music project. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a lot of things going on now. Your, your, your press release is like, has seven different things to talk about. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but first and foremost that we want to talk about, Demi wants to talk about is your collaboration with Carly Rae Jepsen. Okay. Really quick. So I'm a, I'm a Twitter stalker. Just kidding. Just for you. I am, but it was like one post was like, oh my God, um, I like Carly Rae Jepsen. Like I, I fuck with Carly Rae Jepsen. Two posts later, she's like, I've done a collab with Carly Rae Jepsen. What's up? <laughs> so how did that happen? <laughs> I swear. Oh my God. Okay. Well, I mean, that was a little bit of a planned tweet by tweet sort of situation. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay you know, it's just, it's like Twitter magic. Instead of movie magic in the music industry, you just have to do like perfectly timed Twitter interactions for people to freak out over. Um, but it basically like kind of did happen like that. When I got the collab opportunity with Carly, it was like, we reached out to her team just as kind of like a Hail Mary, like being like, who knows if she wants to, that'd be amazing. If she doesn't, that's completely fine. She's Carly Rae Jepsen and I will not blame her for not to work with me on this song. <laughs> and so she did to my amazement and surprise. And it was just kind of like a whirlwind of like FaceTimed her, called her, get the vocals and everything for this track. And she was like, do you want anything specific? And I was like, no, if you're Carly Rae Jepsen. You can do literally whatever you want and I will be amazed and it'll be fine. And she did. And it sounds great. And I'm super excited that it's coming out on Wednesday. Yeah. Did you do it in person or were you just passing back and forth stuff over the internet? We had to just pass stuff back and forth. I mean, Carly's in LA and I'm in Brooklyn. So we were across the country and just kind of did everything electronically. Yeah. Let's talk about the Brooklyn thing. So you're insane. from the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And the music industry is really based in LA more than New York. Demi and I are in Brooklyn as well. And we always talk about the LA versus New York thing. Why did you choose <laughs> Brooklyn over LA considering the different- Let things everybody know. <laughs> Well, okay, to be honest with you, LA is not my favorite place in the world. It's just <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> Demi is so gratified by that answer. I mean, I literally have a song that I like wrote a lyric in that was about how I don't like LA necessarily. And it's, it's, I, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's not my John, cup of tea. John Mayer has an entire song about, I don't want to go to LA anymore. Good so, for him. John yeah. Mayer, I agree with the sentiment. I mean, I will visit LA. I'm totally fine to visit in, in doses, but I don't want to live there. I think like, I can't drive, so it's really hard for me to get around the city. I can, however, take the subway and do Ubers and taxis here in Brooklyn. And I think growing up in the Bay Area, the vibe of the people is also a lot more similar in New York than it is for LA. So I don't know. It felt like a good place to kind of start a new chapter, but with some familiarity of like the city and everything already. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in the Bay Area? Because you're young enough, you didn't grow up in like the hate ashbury Bay Area. You grew up in the tech Google Bay Area. So I did I did visit the Google Chrome campus once or twice growing yeah. up in the Bay Area. Yeah. How many of your of your of your classmates growing up in high school and stuff, that was kind of their goal. That's gotta be the goal of people in the Bay Area is like, I'm gonna go to college, get an engineering degree, and then I'm gonna go work for whatever tech company. It was very common. I mean, like growing up in the Bay Area, I think there's like a level of creative arts that are just kind of involved in your childhood and everything. But I went to, I went to high school in San Francisco, which obviously has like a very big artist community and everything. But I specifically went to like a technical arts high school, which focused a lot on the like circuitry and programming and all these sorts of things. You better stay friends so, with those people because they're going to be <laughs> having the big mansions in 10 years. I know I'm going to see who's going to make up the next startup and everything. And I'm going to yeah. hopefully invest in their companies. Yeah. I, I definitely grew up around a lot of that, but I took the creative arts route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other thing you have going on right now, besides you have the EP coming up, you have the Carly Rae Jepsen collaboration, and you also have a podcast. 
and it's your second podcast. I listened to parts of your first podcast you did, which kind of documented both the recording of your full length debut album and it kind of gave some background into your family and your home dynamic, the you, kind of your lifestyle. So tell us about this new podcast, what it's about. So the new podcast is called 365 Days with MXM Tune instead of the last one, which was called 21 Days with MXM Tune. So many more days now. There is a lot of days. I got a question the other day. I was like, (laughs) is it daunting to step up from 21 days to 365 days? Because that's like 300 more days. You're doing one per day. uh, Yeah, we're literally doing a daily episode for an entire year, which is crazy. They're like eight minute little snapshots basically about an event in history that happened on whatever day that episode is coming out. So you get historical information about a world event and hopefully that will encourage people to stay curious about what happens in our environment and our history. And um, you get information about what happened in the music industry on that day at some point in time. So maybe a Beatles fact or some, you know, Lord is one of the facts that we have when she released Pure Heroin and just kind of like miscellaneous things around that. And then it also covers what I did on whatever day that was in my life, even though I only have 20 years of experience and not every single day of my life has been interesting so far that I can actually recall something memorable. I think yeah. because you are, you are kind of introducing to your age group podcasting and being educated, and I freaking love that. But speaking of podcasts, are you a fan of, have you ever heard of a podcast called Call Her Daddy? No, I haven't. Jordan's gonna kill. It's basically it's, my, check my, it out. Don't let her <laughs> call her daddy. Is like a really like it's, it's women talking about sex for the most part. And you're you're, if you're into you're, podcasting, girl. You and I both will just will just listen to it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> but your, I was your 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 persona is so wholesome. Like that's it's <laughs> not, yeah. We were actually wondering. Side note: we, we actually were joking before you came on if there is a bangers era Miley Cyrus waiting to spring out of the wholesome Maya. <laughs> oh my God! You know what? I think that people are often surprised by how much profanity spews out of my mouth. And I do Twitch streams and I play video games, and that's kind of the format and where I like let it all out yeah and it definitely ruins the wholesome persona a little bit of being a family-friendly musician just just a tiny bit (laughs) what's interesting about your career is and i say career it's about three or four years old (laughs) is that is that you you went from a high school kid to a 20 year old adult you can't buy a beer yet but you can you know drive a car you can vote you know (laughs) yeah and so what is it like what has it been like to become an adult literally become an adult yes on youtube on the internet it's been daunting i mean like you know you're a young kid and all of a sudden you have millions of people watching you doc like you're documenting your entire life and sharing you growing into who you are and figuring Figuring that out too online and it's it's been really scary at points of just wanting to make sure that I don't misstep and hopefully you know make mistakes but my my hope and my goals at least with my own platform is to hopefully remind people that I'm a human being I'm nothing more than you know just another person who happens to have a lot of people who pay attention to her online every single day and I'm still learning who I am and figuring that out too so it's been really scary at times to to deal with being an adult and having all this online presence and, you know, watching my friends go off to college and navigating that experience. And I had to pay taxes the moment I graduated from high school. And like, <laughs> it was, it was really scary. And it's, it's been difficult at times, but I think it's been a huge learning experience too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why- I commend you for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Thank you. <laughs> Why did you choose the ukulele other than it's easy to learn how to play? You know, I think that's probably the main reason. Like the accessibility factor is huge with the ukulele. Like anybody could pick up the ukulele and start learning how to play it. And I wasn't really a rebellious person growing up, but I think the biggest rebellion I ever had was quitting the cello just so I could play ukulele. And my mom, you know, nearly had a heart attack when I she found out that I didn't want to play classical. The cello is rad though. The cello is amazing. Now, don't get me wrong, but I was yeah. like 13. You always had and... that training for <laughs> No, so I love the ukulele because it felt like the exact opposite of everything that I had done up until that point. And I think like, it's just really stuck with me as an instrument. That and it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I think that's the main thing for sure. Mm-hmm. I noticed you're, 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 you had a single come out recently, uh, 
Bon Iver, I guess, uh, in, in, in tribute to the, uh, to the man. Um, <laughs> and what I noticed about that, Demi is, is a musician. That's, I, we should have mentioned that. Demi is a really talented guitar player. And um, so she can get into sure, music and stuff more than I can. But I noticed that on Bon Iver, the production and the layers are more sophisticated than some of your earlier songs. So tell me about the direction that your music is heading in, in terms of the sounds that are, that are coming out. For sure. I mean, I'm still at the core of it. I'm not a producer. I'm just, I'm like, I see myself as a writer. That's really my main passion and my love for music is being able to make songs and write the format of everything. And Bon Iver was really fun because it gave me the opportunity to work with producer Gabe Simon, who is just incredible. And he was the first person that I ever did a session with. And I came back to work with him in Nashville earlier this year before all of this happened. And we started writing Bon Iver and it was, he's just, he's been a great person to work with because I think he recognizes the essence of a lot of my earlier songs where it was just my ukulele and my voice and trying to incorporate that into my newer projects, but still add on the extra element of having those, the more sophisticated layers of production. And so I think what people can look forward to with Dusk specifically as this EP is just having an EP that still has the core elements of why people might have found my music originally, but hopefully elevating it to another level of, of pretty production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there speaking any, speaking of, go ahead, go ahead, Demi. Go ahead, Jordan. No, I was just going to say, speaking of earlier tunes, um, I am absolutely obsessed with your attention to detail um, in particular on, unspoken words is it right am I saying yeah. it right unspoken words mm -hmm. you can hear hints of deleting messages or phone samples that just it just puts you in I feel like I'm you <laughs> I feel like I'm texting a guy and I'm deleting this shit um mm. who produces your tracks like that's that's genius that's genius those details so that, yeah I loved working on that song that was my favorite song off of my first album. And I worked with producer Robin Skinner, who has his own project, Cave Town. And he's just incredible. It was the first time I'd worked with a producer ever. And, and he's in the first podcast you did with Spotify. Yeah, so he's yeah. in the podcast and we were living together. We had never met each other in person before, but we lived together for like two weeks of our life working on this album and everything. And it was a crazy yeah. experience, but he is really attentive to those small details. And I was talking to him about the story and he was like, this sounds like you're texting somebody and we should just add those elements into the song and I was like yeah so cool. absolutely mm -hmm. so cool you have a big catalog for only having three or four years worth of material you've put out a lot of songs for someone with not a whole long uh you know um for someone who hasn't been around that long what song do you find fans are into the most that you get the most questions about you get the most comments about I would think prom dress has got to be up there right I'm dressed because, definitely up there just because of the sheer popularity of the song. Yeah. yeah. It's very relatable. It's the most relatable song. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's definitely one of the ones that's most common for people to ask me. And I, I have my whole spiel for it memorized of the story behind it and the, the reasons that they might like it. Yeah. <laughs> one thing you said, and I quote on Twitter was, we do it for the girls and the gays. That's it. Okay. Now, here's what I noticed. You're encouraging girls to buy jeans that fit them. And I quote, mm -hmm. empowering women to feel comfortable the way they were born. This is why I absolutely love you outside of the music and outside of the YouTuber. Um, do you consider yourself a feminist? Absolutely. I mean, like I have identified as a feminist for as long as I can remember. I just think everybody should be afforded equal opportunity and hopefully encouraging people. And I'm really aware of the fact that I have a really young, diverse audience of a lot of young women specifically and people of color and people that are also part of the LGBTQ community. And I think it's like, I just try and write messages that I think I wish I heard growing up. And so if I can, you know, encourage people to hear more positive stuff than I will. Yeah. Who would you want to collaborate with in a perfect world? Do you have like a list of people? I, I, let me back that up a little bit. Are there collaborations in the, you don't have to give me names, but surely you've got stuff that's, that's rolling down the hill, right? I definitely am working with a couple of people that are on the way, but it's Bonnie Vare one of them. <laughs> I wish <laughs> I would be so scared to approach that call collaboration. Soon. soon. My God, maybe one day, but I mean that for now, I'm happy to just write a song and name it after Bonnie. <laughs> yeah. Here, here I am again with my stocking, but you're a plant lover. Yeah, 
You're a plant lover. I don't know if you know this. My plant. entire partner yeah. here is green. Oh my goodness. For anyone who's listening, she has about 35 plants hanging on her wall. Um, she is in fact a plant. Do you have a favorite plant? I do. It's called a pothos and it's just really hard to kill. And it was the first plant I ever got myself and I haven't made it die yet. So it's my favorite one. I, don't, yeah. I didn't see any succulents on the wall. I have one. Okay. It's over here. It's hanging. Let's give, a, let's give like, this right. is like, yes. can we show the fans? Like, yeah. So this is my plant wall. Wow. There's some more over there. I'm adding to the collection slowly. I live near a nursery, which is not the greatest location for me. <laughs> yeah. That's where like all your, all your, um, your YouTube money goes. Is, it's just plants. plans. Yeah. Like, instead of buying, <laughs> instead of buying like a Maserati or a Lamborghini, you're going to buy a really rare plant from, this is from the jungles of Madagascar and there's only. <laughs> <laughs> the air in my apartment is so crisp at this point. It's oh great. yeah. It's like a yeah. greenhouse in there. Yeah. <laughs> what's your, what's your day to day like? Because you have to balance both your YouTube, your social media audience, and then the bigger overarching projects, the albums, the podcast. It's kind of all over the place, depending on what we're doing at that point, just because there are differentiations with like the podcast and working on music and making YouTube videos and all the various different things that I'm doing. And, and so like every day is pretty different. Um, but usually I'll wake up and kind of catch up on what's going on on the Twitter sphere and try and interact over there. And I definitely am on social media every kind of waking moment I have that's not being filled by Zoom calls and writing process. But lately it's been a lot of recording for this podcast, given that there are 365 episodes that I have to get through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when does the podcast start? September 14th is when the first episode comes out. Yeah. You know what? Um, I have this episode that we're doing, talk about like layers instead of layers, like Inception, yeah. a podcast Inception. After you finish, after you finish, find <laughs> Maya's new podcast. And yeah. listen to whatever the first episode is, whatever slice of history she has to offer. Pretty sure it's on Alcatraz Island. So that's, if that's of interest to you, Staying if you like, area, you know, you yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if you just did nothing but Bay Area? Like, one day is Alcatraz, the next day is like E40. You do like a whole episode of E40. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a month dedicated to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you love New York enough to, do you think you're going to stay here long term or? Definitely. I think like for now, I definitely see kind of the next, I don't know how many years of my life playing out, but a good chunk of it being in New York. I love it here. I'm like really happy to be living here. And I love the Bay Area and California a lot, but I definitely grew up there my whole entire life. And it doesn't hurt to be able to get to know a new city and learn about it and live in it for a while too. And you get the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. Does moving to New York, do you see a difference in your writing you know, that's a good question. I think that it definitely, I feel like I write more about like the more mundane aspects almost of what my life is like. Like I really appreciate the minute, like the minute things that we kind of all go through, whether it's like sitting on a train and listening to music, like describing those scenes that we have. I really enjoy writing about those. And I don't know if I had that to write about when I was back in Oakland. So that's the way it's probably changed. Yeah. You feel yourself becoming more jaded and hardened and. You know. <laughs> Am I immune to the smell of garbage? Yeah. <laughs> and you've been here for what, a year, I guess. I moved back in January. And so I'm very new, but I've been, I've been like visiting on and off since like beginning of last year. So, so you've I've had a big chunk of winter. You've had a New York winter. I, I literally, literally got one snow day when I was moving and that was all. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I like snow days in New York because I don't drive. Like I'm from, yeah. I'm from Kansas City. I'm from the Midwest. And so snow means scraping ice off your car and all that kind of stuff. But when you're in, you know, a city where you, you know, it's who cares. You just get to enjoy Probably it. Out. That's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What are you listening to personally? Like what, what kind of music do you have going on right now on your- I've been listening to a lot of like, I, there's this playlist on Spotify called Lorem, which I really like. And they update it like every week with some new songs, but every single week I find new music and artists that I really enjoy listening to. And I've been loving this EP I'm addicted or no not I'm addicted I'm allergic to dogs and it's by Remy Wolf and it's incredible yeah wow 
Cosine. Can we talk about <laughs> style for a sec, which I absolutely cannot get enough of. One day she's wearing butterflies in her hair. The next day it's a Marvel t-shirt. You can do it all. Um, what is your go-to outfit? My go-to outfit is honestly, if nobody is looking at me for the entire day, it's usually just sweatpants and a hoodie at this point. Like they're just, <laughs> there's no reason to put more effort into anything anymore. Um, Tell us about merch. Also, we see you have yeah. some new merch. Where can we get it? So merch.mxm2.com. Free commercial. Go. <laughs> merch.mxm2.com. We've got a bunch of new t-shirts that roll, just rolled out. I even sell soap <laughs> over on the merch website, you know, so you can keep no your way. hands clean. It's called MXM Clean. We released it when quarantine was before quarantine was announced. And, you know, I think we could all I'm use a little it. bit of hygiene right kidding? now. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm totally going to do some like some graphics on the like the little you know like little like infomercial graphics. Wow. <laughs> you know, in your in your podcast, you talk about your your previous podcast, the the one about your your life and your family and your album. You mentioned how close your family is, so which is it's almost like it's achingly adorable how close your family is and your brothers in some of your YouTube videos, and your parents are really nice. Are you really that close to them or is it all just kind of for show? <laughs> Do you actually kind of not like your brother? I am actually that close to my family and probably even it's downplayed online. Like my brother and I poke fun at each other in the YouTube videos that we're in. But, you know, I live with him here in Brooklyn and, you know, we hung out this entire weekend and we just did stuff together because we're actually best friends. And so that's really nice. And I'm really close with my parents too. I FaceTime them probably a little bit too much. Like they just probably are annoyed with me just constantly calling them being like, hey, what's up like how's your day going um but yeah my dad also is an avid twitter user and member and so he oh. is in the twitter sphere and like is that where you were inspired to start social media <laughs> Your dad no, was like the family's dad? original influencer. My yeah. dad, well, I mean, my dad was definitely more aware. Is your of, like, dad? Social media so you don't have to, like give details, but is your, is your dad a tech guy? Is he like a tech industry guy? My dad teaches tech, and so he was part of different education schools and stuff. He did a lot of tech work for them, but he is very well. It like he knows a lot about technology, and so I kind of miss living with him just for the sheer convenience of having somebody help me with my wi-fi router yeah Aww. isn't it crazy that in 2020 we're still having issues with wi-fi routers like it's, <laughs> it's all the wires man i don't it's understand it it's crazy we need everything to be wireless at this point if it is you know that's definitely the goal i'm like looking at all the wires i have draped around my room you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like guitars it's, everything. it's not pretty <laughs> Who named you, by the way? Where did you get this name from? Can you tell us the story behind your name? That you're talking yeah, so about Maya or MXM? Maya, yeah, I know. I was MXM like, which one? Me? <laughs> <laughs> so it was my dad. No, yeah, my yeah, dad yeah. wanted. Oh, MXM to him is an old family name from the 1800s. <laughs> well, okay, you, you're probably gonna laugh at this because it actually was my dad who came up with it. It wasn't no me. So way. My dad was the one who came up with MXM tune and it was made when I was 11 and that was when I got my first Instagram account and like I was trying to basically become known for my cartoons that I was drawing it didn't happen I now get to do visual arts as a part of my music project but it was not the reason that I got to do any of this in the first place but I needed a username and my dad was like why don't you use your initials MXMT and then you can add OON at the end so it's like Maya's cartoons and I used it for everything including my music and now I'm here and it was too late for me to change it. Your, your single covers, your album covers that have illustrations, are those your illustrations? Yeah, those are my illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> you are dripping with talent. It's too much, Maya. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I was an overachiever, I'll admit. Yeah. <laughs> you just told me. Is it a plant tattoo? This is, yeah. Yeah, I've got a few of them. <laughs> Oh, but anyways, she has the most gorgeous. Wow, what is that? What what so, flower is that? It's a cherry blossom, and this is matching with my mom. So if you were ever curious if I actually wow. don't like my parents, I like them enough to have matching tattoos with both my mom and my dad. <laughs> Does um, your dad have that tattoo, and your mom has the cherry? My mom has this one, and my dad has this one. So we have the same tattoo in the same place on both of our arms. 
yeah, but this one's with my, like, for the women in my family, and this one's for, like, the men, so this is German corn flour and Scottish blue thistle, so this So is the big question is, when you get your flaming skull tattoo, where are you <laughs> going to put it? Right smack in the middle of my forehead. People yeah, have like to a SoundCloud rapper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, get some teardrops. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to get the barbed wire, like Post Malone. It's going to yeah. be great. awesome. Yeah. Great. <laughs> J Demi just uh, talked about your the origin of MXM Tune, but mm -hmm. I want to talk about let's rewind all the way at the beginning. You said in an interview or your podcast, probably both, that you wanted to be a YouTuber when you were a little kid, when you were like what, like nine or ten years old, when being a YouTuber was hardly a thing, and your parents mm -hmm. were kind of suspicious of that. So. Yeah. Tell, tell us about how you started the channel and, and how you decided what to put on the channel. So I actually started my channel as like a collaborative channel with me and three of my friends in middle school. It was because we all wanted to be famous YouTubers and we thought it would be the best to do it as a group of friends. So they're kind of like the Winklevoss twins and you screwed e them over like Zuckerberg? Yeah. <laughs> I took over the channel once they, they had done their job and it was time for me to have yeah. my moment no. in the spotlight. No, not at all. It just became something that was inactive. And um, it was under my email at that time. It was what I had signed up with. And so I just used it to transfer over into the Smooth MXM move. account. Yeah, email. I know. Thank Smooth you. Yeah. Very big brain move. Um, and so I, you know, I wanted to be a YouTuber just because I don't think I had seen anybody at that point make just creative content production into a job outside of like, YouTubers being able to kind of decide what they wanted to make every single time they made a video. And to me, that was like a dream just to be able to create anything that I wanted to create for an audience. And um, I got to do that with music. And I now have YouTube as a facet of why I was able to do that and everything. But my mom and my dad used to shake their heads and be like, just go to your homework and go to college <laughs> and get good grades. Yeah. <laughs> well, it took you on a wild ride. And I think it's super cool that you share um, that you've been able to share you growing up from teenager to young lady. And what advice, I know Jordan is, has always told me about this question, but do you have any advice for people um, when it comes to sharing content and not feeling pressure? Because I know social media for a lot of people can feel kind of like this pressure, but you do it so naturally and so seamlessly that it's like, this, this is this girl's passion. So what advice do you have for people? make stupid content like make just really stupid content because keep i think it going. that keep it going exactly like make consistent stupid content like i think that there is and like not stupid as in don't be don't be making dumb decisions with what you're doing but you can just make whatever you want and i think that relieves the pressure that we often put on ourselves to make good things because who's to even say what that is like wow. as long as you're having fun with it that's the most important part yeah mm -hmm. do you feel point. like Thank your you. past doing those sort of stereotypical makeup tutorial, skin routine kind of things. How she started about... that trend, technically. <laughs> you, you start, you were the first one? The very before the first makeup tutorial. Before uh, Bella in tune. <laughs> oh, man. What was the, what was the question? <laughs> the, the, question was, the question was, do you feel like you're past it? Do you, do you care about those types of videos anymore? Oh, oh, absolutely. Like, I still love watching those, even as, like, a consumer of content. They're, like, kind of my favorite type of video to watch. Like, I love being able to get to know a person if I really enjoy their art and being able to to know who they are as a person on top of that is really rewarding and lovely um, just because I think it gives you like a better peek into who they are and so I still like making that kind of content it's just that it takes a lot of time to like edit an entire YouTube video so it's it's a lot of work like people who get to do it for a living all the time it's definitely like I hope people understand how much effort goes into all of that like any sort of editing at all yeah which type of mask is more useful like a charcoal mask, do you like that? Or do you go more the Korean face mask route? You know, I I go with the, the I would say, mm, clay masks are definitely preferred. Once you get to paint on your own face are more fun, yeah. It kind of feels <laughs> really like because it seems like a, there's a trend, yeah. There's a trend of like the, the, the peel. The like sheet the, masks, I think. Yeah, yeah. so you mm. are a, you are a topical person. Rub yes. it on. Rub I it am, on. I'm a pro, like, it. do it yourself, you know? Yeah. We're really about to boost sales for the topical <laughs> masks right now, so I got to add it to the merch store. I got to add it to the merch <laughs> store. Yeah. That would be sick. That would be sick.
I don't I trust mean, myself to do skincare quite yet, but maybe one day. MXM <laughs> mask is it could totally be a thing. That would be you just super add sick. MXM in front of anything, and then it turns into a merch yeah. item. <laughs> yeah. Your tunes they seep right of like love. They remind me of every single tingling feeling I experience when I'm falling in love. I literally can't mm. not think of that when I'm listening <laughs> to your music. Are you writing about somebody in particular? You know, <sighs> I, I, <laughs> I'm getting deeper. I'm trying to get the definitely, dish. Yeah, I know, I know. You guys are really trying to make me spill Girl here. Talk. Um, <laughs> I think that, I, you know, obviously I've written a lot of songs about my real life experience. And I think, you know, Dawn was like the first EP where I was really like talking about, I think falling in love for the first time and like honestly knowing what that, felt like and dusk will be about the opposite of that feeling like falling out of love for the first time and what that's like for people wow. and so um yeah I write about real people but I hopefully you know nobody's come knocking on my door yet being like please don't ever write about a song like write a song about me. every <laughs> single time I do it I feel like I'm like having a Taylor Swift moment yeah <laughs> oh my goodness speaking of Taylor Swift I want to play a game with you um before you head out yes. um do you remember Mario Kart? Uh, Mario Kart. <laughs> okay, so if you, this is something, this is Jordan actually came up with this one. Would you rather be quarantined with, if you can answer as quickly as possible, okay, okay Batman or Spider Man? Spider Man. <laughs> SpongeBob, Sandy, or Patrick? Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> really cinderella seems entertaining. Sleeping beauty. do you want the do you want oh my the god sleeping room? beauty because she'd just be so quiet sleep all day okay yeah. miley you cyrus know? or taylor swift that's hard that's taylor hard. swift because she has cats <laughs> okay. okay which i don't know if you're too young for this but which of the do you are you familiar with powerpuff girls yes absolutely mm -hmm. which color of the powerpuff girls would you choose Buttercup. I she was my favorite green. <laughs> Blink One Eighty Two or Panic at the Disco. Oh God, Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> yes, girl. Okay, only YouTube or only Twitter. Only Twitter. One or the other. You, only you'd pick. Sure. You'd pick Twitter. Wow. Over I would pick Twitter, Twitter over Twitter. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Right I was expecting the, the, the opposite. All right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I definitely don't go on YouTube nearly as often as I go on Twitter. Like if I looked at my screen time, it's very catered towards Twitter. <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy? It's got to be strange for you coming up as a YouTuber. How many ads there are about how to become a YouTuber? How many like courses you can get? Oh my God. I remember seeing like the, like the ads of people being like, this is how you make a million dollars on YouTube. Do you agree with them? Can you no, know, like, it's total bullshit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> literally, so many of those videos are just like take it from a real videos. one. <laughs> yeah. You you have There's the no guy way. with the cell phone, like the self shot cell phone, where he's like, yeah. <laughs> I took I took this guy who had seven subscribers, and now he's got one point five million subscribers. I'll show you how now in seven he's weeks. MXM tune. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's no recipe for success. There's just, there's no way you can quantify. You have to keep making success. content. That's like, that's the recipe. It's not a recipe. It's just a habit. You have to get yourself yeah. in the habit of making it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maya, we'll let you go. We really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much for pleasure. having me, you guys. And this we're looking so forward much. to the Carly Rae Jepsen collab, Woo! the EP, the podcast, everything you have going on. Um, Shout out your socials right now. Let, let people know where to find you. I am MXM Tune, M-X-M-T-O-O-N on literally everything. So come and hang out anywhere Do you have online. a Twitch schedule? Do you have a regular Twitch schedule? I do. Fridays and Sundays, um, 6 p.m. Eastern on Fridays and 4 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. Yeah. All right. You. All right. Thank awesome. you so much, Maya. We'll talk to you Thank later. Thank you, guys. Thank you to Maya, a.k.a. MXM Tune, for being on the show. And thanks for listening to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. You can find me at jordanedwardsstudio.com or on Instagram at jordanedwardsstudio. And you can find me at demi underscore ramos on Instagram. Thanks for listening. <laughs>